So do you want to hear my do you want to hear my UK accent? Yes. <laughs> this is like the best accent in the world and this is all I know how to say and it's awful and it doesn't even sound British but God save the queen that's my that's my British accent. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys even say I sound like Indian. See, I told you it doesn't sound British. I sound Indian. Do you guys Thank even God. say do you guys even say God save the queen anymore? Is that more like a turn of the century kind of thing? <laughs> we say it all the time. Uh, no. Do you really? Culturally, you're not supposed to eat in your nails when you've done it. I'm joking, I'm talking about I was, I was about to say what? <laughs> oh my god. God save the queen. Okay, we need our apple pie now. <laughs> what is it? Oh, that's more, that's more American, I guess. Do you? Fucking froze again, haven't I? Um, <laughs> Greg went out looking for a hack. <laughs> What is really cool about having you on as a guest is I've never had a forensic analyst on the show. So oh. like, what is it? Like, I usually always have hackers. Like, what is it about forensics that drives you that kind of just, you know, tickles your pickle? <laughs> <laughs> tickles <your> pickle. <laughs> <laughs> what about forensics tickles your pickle? So my pickle gets tickled. Um... <laughs> By no, I'm joking. Um, I don't have to say that. So, um, <laughs> these days, I have to say that. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I don't want to burst your bubble, but I'm not, I don't actually really enjoy it. Oh, I, you I, don't. Oh, no. you were, I thought you were being sarcastic. You actually, no, I don't, I massively don't enjoy it. Like, I, I kind of, you know, I love network forensics i love like you know oh you're a packet monkey you like to look at packets i do i do actually and i've oh, always really amazing. enjoyed that a girl after like, my own heart <laughs> i, I like, like piecing together things that have happened on a network i think you can get a lot of information from that um whereas on an like an end point forensics um I, th I think that you have to be really you have to live that you have to really yeah. love it and live it because it's so um it's so siloed in a sense um yeah. and i you know i could i can fumble my way through it but i i don't feel like i'd do a great job these days you know yeah. so i did that at university and then the jobs that i went into i was working in like a, a forensic you know my title might have been forensics but i was very much like a stock based person doing okay. defense doing predominantly network based stuff and that is that's amazing i've never met anyone who who was a packet monkey like myself but you know that's that's so cool because it's we're rare we're a very rare breed do you think so oh yeah like uh, like okay so in in uni did you guys have a network forensics course did you we yeah we did really you know, we had a, yeah we had a class on on network forensics where you guys and, dug into like the packet headers and you know yeah, nine byte offsets and that's and a, let mm. me find it network uh forensic oh you guys are so much more advanced than us <laughs> oh i don't know about that dot net i don't know if anyone's like watching this and they want to learn more about network forensic network traffic analysis dot net go to that Fantastic. network traffic analysis dot net okay yeah. i'm it's, done with um, that i'll put that a there. guy called brad who um basically anytime a piece of malware comes out in the news whatever he'll go and somehow magically get a pcap of um, real network traffic and analyze it analyze it and create a challenge out of it and put it online and it's oh that's amazing fantastic. like kind of like the old honey net challenges like scanning. yeah very similar very similar network traffic yeah sorry go on sorry. so yeah. how long have you how long have you been in the industry like how long have Not you not a great deal not as long as most people um okay. probably about six and a half years something like that oh wow that's amazing 
Okay, so you like digging into packets. You're more on the network forensics side. What about log forensics? Do you like to, like, okay, so your ideal job, of course, your ideal role is, of course, I guess, sitting in a sock and looking at packets, looking at um, CM events, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I okay. think with, with that, like, logs is part and parcel of it. Like, I don't think, you know, you can't, um, logs is part of your evidence, isn't it? Yeah. You can't, well, you for can't sure. Really do a great job without without both, and I think the perfect scenario is having um, endless logs and and pcaps to play with. Um, yeah. Well, it, yeah. You need that the the network and the endpoint. Like, okay, this is what we saw in the network. This is what the what the you know response, the stimulus and response was on the endpoint. So uh, interesting. Um, so how do you believe that machine learning is changing the network forensics landscape? So back in the day, right, you would get your hands on a worm or malware and, or an exploit and run it and record the packets with TCP dump. You don't have to do that anymore. create snort signatures, right? Like, or whatever, Siricata signatures. How do you think machine learning is changing that? Like, I mean, do you think the, the days of creating IDS signatures are going to eventually be gone and be over and replaced with ML models? Or like how, like, how do you think that ML is shifting or changing the network forensic analyst? That is a really good question. Um, I think it's actually making our jobs a lot easier. I mean, I say okay. our jobs, I don't do this anymore. I'm, you know. Um, but it's definitely making things easier. Um, I, I know just in, in my short time um, in cyber defense, in these technical roles, you know, I'd be in some environments that, that might have a great deal of budget and they've got a lot of tools to play with and those tools auto-generate, um, you know, certain defense mechanisms, whether that's a, a rule set or a use case or whatever, um, or you can type it in here and it appears here and blah, blah, blah. And then there's other, um, there's other companies that don't have that same level of budget and they're very dependent on having that, okay. maybe that one person. Um, so yeah. I think machine learning's definitely got its part to play. And um, I mean, I, I'm not a massive fan of it yet. Um, I don't think it's advanced enough to start replacing jobs, um, but okay. I think it'll get there. Sure. Yeah. And just because you have an ML based NDR, like a network, you know, detection response system that's powered by ML, whether it's supervised or unsupervised learning models, you still have to have a human or an analyst to analyze the events and, and look at them. Okay. So you know, you have an outlier, so you have shell code or you have an op sled, you know, what, what is this in the greater scheme of things? This is, you know, we're just looking at just a fraction of what's going on. You still need that analytic rigor from a human, right, to, to make sense of it. Yeah, and, and I think not as much in, you know, environments that have got a great deal of import when it comes to machine learning and they can really prioritize that and work with it. Um, and hire a team that, um, you know, make sure that that's running effectively and doing what it needs to be doing. But for those companies that don't have that expense, and a lot of them don't, um, especially in the UK, for some reason, despite the fact that, um, you know, the cost of cyber attacks affects us like massively, um, you know, then they're, they're never going to be in a position to afford that. So we're always, I, for the foreseeable future, always going to need people that can do those manual tasks. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've never, I've never worked in an environment that is machine learning dependent, like in that sense, to that extreme. Um, no. It's always been integrated with with how we work and um, like learned behavior from 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 that sort of perspective. Yeah, and you've been in, I guess, diff very diverse roles. Like you were even cert at Visa. Um, you know, you've done. I'm assuming the whole gamut of of incident response forensics work, right? So, what's what's your workflow? Like, what's your what's your tool set? If you were to kind of lay it out on a table, this now is Eliza's, now this I'm is Eliza's a CEO. crime scene investigation tool. Now I'm a CEO. It's PowerPoint. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. These are my slides. <laughs> These awesome. are my slides. <laughs> These are my slides. 
Um, so I honestly really liked um, there's, a, there's an absolute wealth of tools that you just get in Kali Linux. Um, there's a wealth of tools that you have in the command line that you can learn and get really great information out of, um, especially when it comes to file analysis um, and, and string analysis and stuff like that. Um, you know, besides that, I really, really loved X-Wave. Um, I really didn't love any case. <laughs> Oh God. Yeah. I'm still going through really <laughs> expensive therapy from my days of eating. God, it's actually really expensive to learn and uh, yeah. really hard to learn actually, but um, fantastic when you get it right. Um, were, yeah. were you more partial to like FTK or? Um, yeah, I love FTK. I yeah, love, me too. Um, I love the fact that, um, oh, what's the name of the company again? That owns uh, Access Data access data i love the fact that they you know released the released the free version for people to play with absolutely fantastic um yeah. lhs actually for training um yeah i love things like i love splunk i know they're a competitor now but i love the fact that you can upload um you know massive log data um an excel an xls Excel file and we can upload pretty much any file to Splunk and it can just parse it and you've got something that you can that's really human readable. I love mm -hmm. that um, you know Wireshark is really available and you can upload any PCAP to that mm -hmm. um, but also actually more so than Wireshark I love um, Net, what's that called? I'm not used it in ages. Network Miner. Network miner, okay. Network miner, fantastic. Okay, so you've yeah. you've you've done your share. If of it's like, easy, I like it. Yeah, open source still. I like why over engineer something and make it more difficult than it. I don't. Yeah, I don't like things that are like autopsy. Like, you know, if I have to like, uh, I know this sounds really ridiculous. So if I'm watching a YouTube video, I'll watch it on like one point five so that it ends quicker. And I think that's sort of my same attitude to, to learning. Mm. If, if I have to like really spend time on the GUI, I don't like it. I like, yeah. I like something that you can apply the conceptual understanding of too. Does that yeah. make sense? If, if you're constantly RTFMing, it's, it's just too much of a time waste. And I get it. I yeah, get it. I, don't, I don't like that. I don't like... I mean, I apply that to every part of my life to the point where if I can read a book, book and watch a film, I'll watch a film. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. You're more of a visual learner. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, if I have to spend, I think this is why I don't really like seam tools. If I have to spend, you know, weeks learning how to use one specific thing when it, they're all based off of the same um, concept. Idea or concept. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not a fan. Not a fan okay. of doing that. Interesting. So what was the most interesting investigation? You know how like every policeman, every cop, every law enforcement officer has that one case that's just, you'll never forget. What is that for you? What is that one case that you'll never forget? That one investigation that was just mind blowing? Um. Okay, so I was by no means leading this investigation. Um, okay. I was very much assisting on it um, in a more junior capacity, but it was, it was fantastic. So there was, I can't say too much, but there was a um, nation state group um, from abroad, from a country beginning with C, and um, they attacked a third party supplier to UK critical national infrastructure oh, wow. through team viewer. Team um, viewer. Through team viewer. Oh my God. And they completely owned their entire estate and their their initial getting was through team viewer. Um, and they were able to copy files, screenshot, loads so of different a things. Massive data massive data exfiltration, huh? Yeah, and it was actually super interesting. And um, I've not, you know, if I'm ever in an environment now and they have TeamViewer, I'm just like, ooh, I don't really want to use that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that Uninstall that, it! <laughs> take it away! But it was, uh, yeah, no, it was really fantastic. Um, 
so I think that side of it from a forensic point of view is super interesting the fact that you get to like the crux of um in a sense potentially acts of war but at the same time um yeah it's not it's not something I, I love to be honest I I did really like um I, I did I I know like socks get kind of a bad rap but I just I really did like that I really liked um getting to know like an internal sock environment I think it's great especially for learning and picking up new skills um I was really lucky actually um I I worked at Marks and Spencer for just under two years um as an internal there and it was such a vague role that I had exposure to um defense Everything. offense forensics <laughs> like infrastructure yeah. like worked with the sysadmins I worked with the programmers like vulnerability management everything and it was genuinely a massively beneficial role at the time I used to think Christ is there anything else you could put on this donkey's back oh. um, but now like I understand how blessed I am to have to have worked there oh well that's amazing well you know it's it's for me, I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that say, okay, Alyssa, you know, it's, it's, it's bad that you've worked at so many places and done so many things and been in so yeah. many roles. You know, it's like your resume is too long. You know, you've worked too many places and you, don't, you weren't there long enough to absorb enough. But, you know, I think like to me, that's the story of my life. Like I've wanted to get what I can from that role or from that position and, and, and then move on to something new and try something new and learn something. And that's sort of been the story of my life, you know, and, uh, and if, if you can take at least one great thing from each role, it sounds like you have, it sounds like you, you learned a lot there and definitely more than one thing. It sounds like. Well, yeah. And I, if I'm totally honest, I know a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, I popped out of the womb with a, with a raspberry pie and I'm like, and they just love it. Like I genuinely, I love the fact that this industry can get people out of poverty. I love the oh, fact yeah. that you can train for free um, online. If you just know the right avenues to go down, you can really make something of your career um, with, sure. very, with very little. And I like to think that I'm sort of an example of that. Oh. Um, so before I got interested in um, cybersecurity, like I said, I, I did a year in um, um, forensics. Before that, I was a waitress. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, in a really shitty part of the world. And, you know, I if there's an opportunity, I will take it. If there's a company that's going to headhunt me out of where I am now, even if I like where I am now, and they're going to pay me more, I'm going to go for it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to lie about that. Keep like, moving so, up. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of this, I think, in the infosec community that's like, I'm not in it for the money, I'm in it for this, and I'm in it for that. I think, who gives a shit? what's the reason why you're in it as long as you're in it as long as we've got like you know people in the industry contributing actually doing some fucking good which i definitely like to think that i am yeah. um that's you know that's definitely where what angle i come at this from um so you know i i wasn't the best at forensics by a, by any stretch of the imagination mm. um but I enjoyed it while I But did you had it. a good time. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's, it, I always kind of thought it was, you know, hokey, uh, like when, when vendors say, oh, you know, we're fighting evil. But at the end of the day, I was like, actually, you know, I mean, if you look at sort of the, this multi-billion dollar industry that Eastern Europe is bringing in off of the um, sale of black market data, you know, and, you know, just profiting off of the data that's stolen, that that money is going to fund human trafficking, yeah. drug trafficking, like evil things in this world. And we are actually up against evil. We're, we're, we're dealing day in, day out with people that, um, you know, really don't care. It's about, uh, you know, what, uh, data that they can profit from, right? It's, there's a reason that data is worth more than oil today. Uh, and, and, and the bad guys know it. You know, and if they can make significantly more off of a ransomware infection, um, you know, than selling drugs on the street corner, um, you know, then they're going to... And that's where they're going to go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, 
you know, uh, definitely. Oh my God. I didn't know that about you, that you, that you, you were a waitress before That's some, that's an amazing sort of coming up story. It's, I mean, you're right. It's a cybersecurity has lifted people out of poverty and low income situations. And that's amazing. You know, and if you have, I always tell people you can teach someone, you know, how to read the fields of an IP header or TCP header, but you can't teach them you know, passion. You can't teach them the interest to want to sit down and learn it, but you can teach them, you know, the, the thing that they need to learn to be able to do their job. But if they don't have the passion to learn it, if they don't have the interest in doing it, you can't teach that. So, I mean, yeah. it's almost like that's got to be the first ingredient because you can teach everything else. Yeah, you, you really can. And I think when it's, um, especially when it's technical, if a computer can learn it, a human brain can you know we're so much more complex and we teach computers they learn from us they are programmed by us so when people are really um scared of computing and really scared of learning about cyber security i always try and come at the angle of just another human has programmed that to do something and you can do exactly the same because you're also a human and there's no such thing as a stupid question because stupid people don't question anything. Yeah. And I think if you come into the industry with those kinds of attitudes, you can, you can do anything, you can, you can fly. And going back to what you were just saying about people doing good in the industry, I think anyone that's contributing to um, the security of your in infrastructure and the ecosystem that we live in, they're doing good, whether that's in a corporate environment or an industrial control system environment, anything like that, um, you are, you did, you're doing good. Like the penetration testers, they break things to make them better, to make them safer, um, so that they can then go out into the world. And I think we, we kind of forget that because it just becomes daily, the daily grind. Um, and that's a shame because I think if we played that up more, um, we probably wouldn't have such a deficit of, of people because everyone wants to be a superhero, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So if you could go back five years and talk to Eliza back then, what would you tell her? Don't fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> you would tell her not to do it? No, I wouldn't. I think <laughs> Stay a waitress, Eliza. Stay a waitress. <laughs> well, I think because I was so like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. This so la easy, very like, laissez-faire. Yeah. I, I think I, uh, I just you know did things and then like the next thing would come along and i'd be like yeah, of course i can do this um right. and then the next thing and the next thing um and i think if i actually knew the scope of like you know what you have to learn the fact that it's um you have to learn so much about so little in you know do you know that do you know what i mean you have to yeah. learn so in depth in so many areas um that i probably would have been scared off by it um yeah so I actually, I probably would have just told myself to get your head down for today, forget tomorrow. Oh, that's, that's kind of the thing I live by today. Yeah. I think, I think what I would do is I'd probably go back to that, uh, that alley and say, oh God, there's so much I would say. <laughs> I think, I think, I think probably the biggest thing would be, um, don't take it so personally. So I have a tendency to um, really beat myself up for, for mistakes and, you know, yeah. and there's so many trolls out there, so many people with, you know, neg something negative to say. Um, I think I would tell myself not to take it so personally, not to take it so hard, you know, and, and you know, the, tomorrow's a new day, you know, so I think that's what I would say. I think that's good. I think that's good because I like, face it, we're all you know, we're all angels some days and then we're all fucking cunts other days, right? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so, I, love your, you know. I love your vernacular. You totally have to, you have <laughs> well, to you be can... on every episode of Night TV. This is amazing. <laughs> you are my new co-host. Um, you just zoom is... me in for like a still. This is amazing. And like the uh, voice we, of we me need to... going, fucking cunts. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Best freeze frame ever. Um, so... Sorry, are you going to get demonetized? <laughs> you no. it out, can't you? that's okay i really don't care about that um okay. um yeah so okay well uh this has been amazing uh okay i would love to close out with what your advice would be for the little elizas running out there that are get wanting to get into f network forensics or just cybersecurity in general what's your advice for them 
little Eliza's. That's a really scary thought, isn't it? Can you imagine? Like, second guess, second guess. Like, <laughs> 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 okay. um, oh, that's a great question. Okay, so I would, this is going to sound really cheesy, but literally take it one step at a time. So, okay. You know, like the top can, of the stairs is a long, you know, it can be a long way. It can look like a really big deal, but just concentrate on the step that you're on and then just concentrate on the next one. And what I mean by that is if you're reading something and you don't, you know, and you're learning it for the first time, you're learning it for the first fucking time. Like just learn it. Don't think you have to be an expert in it immediately. And I think that's where I went wrong quite early on um, with confidence and stuff because I just thought, yeah it'd be fine and then i'd read something and go oh shit i don't get it and i'd concentrate on the fact that i didn't get it rather than just fucking learning it so that would be my yeah. advice yeah you know it's 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 kind of like that whole and i'm going to mask her the name but mudson something in mudson the 10 mile march i don't know do you hear the story of that no but you can totally tell me it okay in 1911 a british explorer robert falcon scott that doesn't sound anything like Muslim. You didn't learn about this in school? No. <sighs> our school, our schooling is so much worse than, than UK. I, I, I assume you guys just have better schooling than us. Better I education. Just didn't, I just, so in 1911, there was this British explorer. This is the part where I get to like artificially sound smart. Uh, you, this British explorer. <laughs> you got to ask questions. This is amazing. And nor and, and a Norwegian explorer named Amundsen, and they they both oh. went to they were both going to race to the South Pole, right? So it was something like Scott was going to just walk as far as they could, as as far as his team could every day until they couldn't march anymore, and Amundsen would just do like twenty miles a day, and. You would think that Scott would get there first because, you know, he did the most he could every day, whereas a Munson would stop every 20 miles and rest. And it was actually a Munson who got there first um, because um, Scott's team actually died in the process. <laughs> it's this really sad story. And I probably have it totally flipped. Like it was probably a month in that made like, anyway, that died. Anyway, you can see how awesome my memory is. But I just know like I'm just thinking like this is and I can't even remember why I brought this up, but it was like oh yeah, you were talking about like, you know, just take it one step at a time and yeah, okay. you know. Okay. I totally And you're like, don't let's just forget die. that whole thing just happened. Take a rest. Because I spent like 20 minutes trying to remember their name. Anyway. No, I love it. I've learned something new. All right, Ms. Eliza, thank you for being on the show. This is seriously, I think it's been one of my favorite episodes. This is oh, this it, is it's my favorite episode because I'm on it. <laughs> it's, it is. It's going to get the most views. So just watch. You're going to go viral. <laughs> <laughs>